Hey everyone, in today's video, I have a fun one for you. I'm actually gonna share three of my favorite circle games that you can play in kindergarten, first, and second grade. Now, circle games are, of course, games that can be played in a circle. Usually you do this in a whole group manner where you have all of your kids either spread out on the rug or you can go outside. You can also do it with small groups too, but they're more fun with a larger amount of kids. Now, I think my third video ever on YouTube is this one right here, and this is where I actually share two of my all-time favorite circle games, Buzz and Sparkle. Now, it is an older video, so don't mind any of the editing or the lighting or whatever. I was just getting started, but it has filled with some great content. Those two games are still some of my all-time faves. So after you watch these three games, go ahead and watch that one as well. I'll link it down in the description. All right, so if you're ready to hear all three games, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. I also want to make a quick note that during this time of social distancing, circle games are great because students don't need to be right on top of each other when they're playing. So if you have a big enough space either inside or outside, your students can easily be like three feet apart and still play these games. Okay, so circle game number one is called Syllable Circle. And this is a great one to get students thinking about the different syllables in a word and help them practice their phonological awareness. For this game, students will be in a circle and I like to start by using our names. So especially in kindergarten and first grade towards the beginning of the year, I like us to figure out how many syllables we have in our names, and this is a fun way to practice that. To play this game, students would first need to see how many syllables are in their first name. My name, of course, is Susan. So two syllables, and then they come up with an action for each of those syllables. So I might say, Susan. So snap and then clap. And then what you would do as you're modeling this to your class, you would tell them, my name is Susan. And they would copy it by saying Susan and do the exact two movements that I just did. Students would then go around in a circle and they would each say their own name with whatever moves they decide to make. Some might shimmy their hips, some might do some clapping, some snapping, whatever fun move they want to do, it's totally up to them and it gives them a little movement and freedom to express themselves as well. And then after they say their name with their syllable actions, the entire class repeats it by doing the same thing they did. Now, like I said, I generally start with our student names, but you can really do this with any type of category. So I like to go into animals after that, where students can think of any animal, figure out the syllables, do a little action, and we pass it around the circle. If you wanted to add a little skill into this, you could also have students think of a character in the book that they might be reading, and they can share the character's name, so they're already thinking about who the main character is, and then they have to go ahead and segment that character's name into syllables, do the actions, and pass it along. And of course, you can do this with a bunch of fun different things like what's your favorite food, what's your favorite game to play at recess, all sorts of favorites like that. Circle game number two is a fun and silly one, and it is called one, two, three, look. Now, not all of your circle games need to have students practicing some sort of skill in the classroom, and this one is just a fun one to get them giggling, get them laughing, and kind of break down any nervous barriers that they might have. So I especially like to play a game like this towards the beginning of the year as we're kind of getting to know one another and getting our students to feel comfortable in the classroom. This game, again, is very simple. All students will do is sit in a circle and their eyes will be closed. You will simply yell out, one, two, three, look. And when they open their eyes, they need to pick one person in the circle to look at, and they're not allowed to change that. So whoever they open their eyes and look at, they're not allowed to change, okay? So if the person that they're looking at is also looking at them, they're both out of the game. So if you happen to open your eyes and say, one, two, three, look, and you are staring at the same person that's staring at you, you both are probably gonna giggle, and you will be out of the game. So you guys will just remove yourself from the circle, and you as the teacher can help, you know, kind of keep this honest a little bit by watching the game go along. If you open your eyes to look and you are looking at someone who's looking at someone else, you are safe. So you can just stay in the circle, close your eyes, and you'll play again. Again, a very simple and silly game that you can play a few rounds of, and it usually gets kids giggling because if your eyes are closed and then you open them and are just staring at someone else who's staring right back at you, it's a little shocking and it's a little, you know, goofy. So 
Lots of laughs to be had with this one. And last but not least, circle game number three is called Alphabet Ball. Now, I actually also shared this game back in, I think, my first year of teaching YouTube. It looks like this. I had it as part of an outdoor game series and played this with my two young boys. This game could definitely be played indoors as well, as long as your ball is, of course, soft so it is safe and it's small enough to actually be thrown around the classroom. To play Alphabet Ball, you will have one person stand in the middle, so I usually will start holding the ball and I will start at the beginning of the alphabet so I will say the letter A and I will toss the ball to someone who I am looking at so I will start there toss the ball to them and they have to think of a word that starts with A before they pass the ball back to me now naturally you're thinking about this game inside you want students standing close enough that they can try to toss the ball gently um, and so we're not really throwing it too far. Once the student on the outside of the circle has said a letter A word and passed it back to me, I turn to the person next to them and I can either choose to continue with the letter A and I won't say anything, I'll just pass the ball back to them and they'll have to give me another word with A or I can change the letter. That is up to the person in the middle. Now to help decide when that person in the middle is going to change to the next person, you can do this one of two ways. First, you could either set a timer, maybe for 30 seconds, and every time the timer goes off, whoever has the ball or whoever's turn is next, they will actually go into the circle and they'll have to pick up where the alphabet left off. So if the alphabet was only on letter C, they would go in and say C or they could change to D. You could also put a turn limit and say that each student can only do three to five different turns, so they could only pass the ball back three to five times before the next person hops in the middle and continues with the alphabet. Naturally, this is a great game for getting students to think about that beginning sound, so they are thinking of phoneme isolation and also their alphabet knowledge of what sounds each letter of the alphabet makes. Now, I also mentioned this in that first video I made about alphabet ball, but you can also do this with many different skills. You could call it rhyming ball and say a word cat and then you pass the ball and that person has to say a word that rhymes with cat before they pass it back to you. You could also do it with different phonics skills like saying a digraph sh. Think of a word that has sh in it. Pass, they say ship and pass it back and then you could change it to a different digraph or review some other sounds and skills you've already worked on. So there you have three different circle games that you can play with your class this year to practice some skills and also just have a lot of fun and build some community in your classroom. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, definitely check out how to play Buzz and Sparkle because those two are still my one and two favorites. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of every new video that I ever upload. Also, if you have any other circle games that are great for kindergarten, first and second grade, please drop it down in the comments below. I love learning about new games to play. I try to play them with my own kids. And if I ever sub in a classroom, it's good to have like a whole list of games that you can just, you know, start playing when you have any random time to fill. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Bye.